<laughs> it's time for Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks with Daddy, Danny Thomas, and Carmen Dragon's Orchestra. But now, Toby Reed, set the scene. Well, it's a bright, sunshiny day in Sycamore Terrace, and coming down the street towards the drugstore of that sour-faced Mr. Tremble is that gay young man in gray, Danny Thomas, in the role of Jerry Dingle, that daydreaming postman. Hello, Mr. Tremble. Hello, Jerry. Oh, bright and cheery, as usual. <laughs> hey, Mr. Tremble, I don't like to ask you a personal question, but why is your face always so green? I don't like to ask you a personal question, Jerry, but why don't you mind your own business? That's a personal question. <laughs> you know, Jerry, it's a lucky thing I hate people. Why? Well, I wouldn't want to make an exception of you. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you're a little confusing, Mr. Tremble. Otherwise, I don't think I'd like that remark. Oh, hello, Mr. Tremble. Oh, say, Jerry. Huh? On your way back to the post office, would you hand this deed to Mr. Peroni at the city hall? Mr. Peroni? I don't remember him. Oh, sure you do. He's got a great big smile for everyone. Big smile? Yeah, nice disposition. Yeah. And a wonderful personality. A big smile, nice disposition, wonderful personality. Oh, I remember him now. What a rat he is. <laughs> If I had a million dollars... Hello, Daddy. Wait for me. Snooks, I thought I told you to stay home and take care of Robespierre. He's all right, Daddy. I left him out in front where the kids are playing baseball. Well, what makes you think they'll watch after Robespierre when they're playing baseball? He's home plate. <laughs> <laughs> well, just run back and see that he's all right. No, I want to stay with you. Where are you going? No place. Are you going to play pinball machine at Trumbull? No, and stop following me. Are you looking for cigarette butts to get? <laughs> now, don't be ridiculous. Hmm. I just saw you pick one up. All right, so I was lucky. <laughs> now go on home. Hmm, I don't want to. Well, if it'll make you any happier to know, I bought a house. Why? We got one. This is for investment purposes. I've made a partial payment, and I'm on my way to the bank right now to get the rest of the money. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is going to be a surprise for Mummy. Whose money are you going to get? Mummy's money. <laughs> is that the surprise? If you must know, it's a joint account. What's that? It means both your mummy and I can take money out of it. You and me must have a joint account in my piggy bank. <laughs> Never mind that. I'll run along home. I have business to take care of in the bank here. What are you going to do? You wouldn't understand. Ah, oh, now, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to take out all my resources and put them in escrow. Does that mean anything to you? Uh-huh. You're going to take out all your horse races and put them in a scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the silliest thing. <laughs> yeah. Ain't it silly, Daddy? <laughs> Come on. I, I want to tell that to the manager of the bank. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh, there he is now. Hey, Jim. What's the joke, Jagan? This will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Snooks. Tell him what I'm going to do. You're going to take out all your resources and put them in escrow. <laughs> What's so funny about that? What a dirty trick. <laughs> I'll see you later, Jim. All right, I'll be down the hall in my office. Daddy, what are all those people standing in line for? This is a bank. Oh. What do you think they're standing in line for? The free penis to the monkeys in the cages. <laughs> They're not monkeys. Are you sure? I ought to be. I give them my salary every week. Well? Well what? That's peanuts. <laughs> I wish Mummy had stopped talking in front of you kids. Oh, here's a window that's free. Are you going to get some money for nothing? <laughs> no. no. I mean, there's a teller here, and she isn't busy. Gee, she's funny looking. Shh. Tell her might hear you. The what? Tell her, tell her. Gee, you're funny looking. 
Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'd like to make a withdrawal, please. I knew I shouldn't have let you come in. Here you are, sir. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, come on, Sooks. Mm-hmm. We've got to go to Mr. Jackson's office. Where is it? Right down this hall. Oh. See, the names are written on the doors. Mm -hmm. You look on that side, and I look on this side. Bemelman. Winkleman. Councilman. Gentleman. <laughs> Jackson. Here it is. Escrow department. Oh, uh, there you are, Mr. Higgins. It's all ready for you to sign. Just sign here. Oh, yes. Thank you. There. There we are. Snooks, this is the start of the Higgins financial empire. Mm -hmm. I'll sell this house at a profit and buy another one. Then another and another. And that'll only be the beginning. Just the beginning? Yes. Do you know when I'll really get going? Uh-huh. When Mommy finds out you took her money out of the bank. <laughs> oh, don't be a wet blanket. Let's go out and look at our house. Ah, uh, you're always looking at houses. <laughs> Now let's listen to Carmen Dragon and the orchestra play his arrangement of Anything Goes. number, Carmen. Thanks, Jerry. Did you hear all of it? Yeah, that business of making so much noise on anything goes is very good, you know. It, it stays in your mind. Well, thank you, thank you. you. Say, Carmen, what kind of an instrument did you use to make that shot? A gun. Oh, a gun? <laughs> you mean if I go hunting, I gotta join the musicians' union? <laughs> well, no, Jerry, but I always try to get real effect in my orchestra. Oh, that's the best way, Carmen. If you want to get fiddle music, there's nothing like a fiddle. <laughs> That's right, Jerry. The same goes for a trumpet. Oh, I suppose so, but a bugle is just as good. Well, so long, Carmen. Where are you going, Jerry? Oh, I got to see Mr. Peroni down at the city hall. Oh, dun 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 Anything goes. Bang, bang. <laughs> That's so good, you know. I like that. <laughs> and now let's pick up our postman as he enters the office of Mr. Peroni. Hello, Peroni. Hello, Mr. Peroni. Oh, you don't have to call me Mr. <laughs> Besides, I'm not Peroni. What do you want? Well, Mr. Higgins told me to give you this deed. Oh, Mr. Higgins thinks I'm still the registrar, huh? He probably doesn't know that I'm now the district attorney. You're the district attorney? That's right. Just like I always said, it's not what you know, it's who you know, you know? <laughs> Do you mean to insinuate that my position of prominence was obtained through political influence rather than personal merit? Oh, I'd never say that. You, you probably had a friend who got you the job. 
That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's right. You haven't got any friends. <laughs> uh, you, you public servant, get out of here. Now, what'll I do with this deed? Get out! <laughs> hmm. Big shot district attorney. What is it, so? Top to be a district attorney? All you have to do is go to college and get your D.A. <laughs> I could be a D.A. I could be higher than that. I could be a D.B. <laughs> Wise guy calls me a public servant. I wish I was his servant. They have more respect for me. <laughs> that guy always had an angle. I remember him during the Depression days when people were jumping through windows. He got a job fixing windows. <laughs> me, I got hit by a man. <laughs> Mr. Peroni, he says to me. I should have said, you don't have to tell me. I deliver mail to your wife. I know you're not Mrs. Peroni, I should have said. <laughs> eh, that would have taken too long. He'd have thrown me out by then. So what? I didn't say anything. He threw me out anyway. What a day. I didn't have a fight. I walked out, didn't deliver the deeds. No hits, no runs, no errands. Wow. <laughs> you know, Dingle, I admire you. You're feeling miserable and you can still think of a joke. Sure, why not let a DA get me down? I could be much bigger than him. I could be a fighting DA. Sure, why not? It's a free country. I'm a citizen. <laughs> Here comes the fighting DA. Yes, here he comes now. What's the matter? Hi, DA. Hi, DB. Hi, DA. Hi, DC. Hi, DA. Hi, DD. Hi, DA. Hi, DA. Now, listen, men. My record is the greatest DA is being threatened. Filler for only is still on the loose. The papers are cracking down on me, and those Sunday issues are getting heavier all the time. Well, get him, DA. What's he done? Funny, he shot 85 men, 63 women, and 23 kids. Well, what you want it for? Carrying a gun without a license. <laughs> And then I'm offering a reward for him. What's the reward, D.A.? $500 dead, $1,000 alive. Bring him in half dead, he gets $750. <laughs> remember this, I don't care how you get him. Anything goes. Must be dreaming. Hey, DA, DA, listen to this. A murder's just been committed out the baseball field. The body was found dead right outside the third baseline. Hmm, looks like foul play. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Dingle, attorney speaking. Hello, DA. This is Special Operative 123 plus tax. We're, <laughs> we're trailing the Peroni mob. The Peroni mob, that's wonderful. We've been chasing them for 50 miles. How are you making out? Great, we're getting 18 miles to the gallon. <laughs> I don't care about that. Are you catching them up? Don't worry, we will. We made Glendale to Riverside in 30 minutes flat. What are you doing now? Fixing the flat. <laughs> well, hurry up. If you don't catch them in the next 30 miles, come back. Why? We only got a B book. <laughs> What's the matter? Is the Peroni mob shooting at you? No, nah, it's just my bubble gum. Bye. <laughs> Men, we finally located the Peroni mob. Now's our chance. Ryan, you go with Nelson. Right. Gordon, you go with Mayor. Right. Jellison, can you play Gin Rummy? Yes. You come with me. <laughs> I meant to ask you, Jelly. You were... Uh, you were supposed to cover the first national bank last night. Where were you? Oh, I was at the second national bank. That's a big idea. That's where I keep my money. Oh. <laughs> calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for Butch Peroni. He is wearing a dark blue coat and trousers, brass buttons and police badge, 4522. Also go to Third National Bank, pick up Officer Ryan. He is wearing a nightstick. That is all. <laughs> Holy smoke, let's get going. He's headed for the Fourth National Bank. What are you so excited about, Dingle? That's where I keep my money. <laughs> all right, Peroni, I got you surrounded. I ain't worried. Why not? I'm in here with Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart. Yeah. Got a match? <laughs> hey, what am I doing here? Don't fool around with me. What are you guys doing in there? We're robbing the bank. What do you think you are, the board of directors? Come on, I'll give you two minutes to get out of there. Chief, remember that's Peroni you're talking to. He's killed 23 DAs in a row. Peroni, I'll give you 48 hours to come out. <laughs> Get away! I'm gonna shoot through the door! You shoot through the door and I'll shoot through your heart! Who said that? I said that! I... I shouldn't have said that. You can't finish me, Peroni! You asked for it! Listen, Peroni! Listen! Listen! <laughs> 
Don't defy my authority. Come out, come out, and surrender to me. For if you force me to come in there, your fate will be worse than death in the chair. You fool! Don't you know you cannot win for? This is what you're letting yourselves in for. I'll be mad at you. Oh, no, not that. I'll be mad at you. Please, man. To hear it, but you're very stubborn men. If you oppose my will, I'll never talk to you again. I'll be irked with you. Your anger's great. I'll be irked with you. Oh, cruel pain. Now you know how much I want you to come out, and you refuse. You're monkeying with dynamite, and you can only lose. If you guys don't give up, do you know what's in store for you? What? I'll hate you with all my might. I'll punish you. I'll put you in a room and lock the latch. A room that's filled with cigarettes and not a single match. I'll meet you in the street when there's a heat of 102. Then I'll blandly ask you, warm it up for you? When you buy some shirts on sale and think you were in luck, I'll ask you what you paid for them and tell you you were stuck. I'll give my life to bring your lawless living to a close, but when you start with me, you'll find anything goes. All right, send the center. Did she go? I'll be sore at you. We're all so hurt. I'll be sore at you. Don't do a dirt. You know, crime doesn't pay, and as the DA, I hear my duty call. I warn you here and now, I won't show mercy if you stall. If you guys don't come out, I'll bang my head against the wall. Oh. I did, too. I'll hit you with all my might. Carmen Dragon with his arrangement of I Know That You Know.
we find Snooks and Daddy en route to the house that Daddy has bought with Mummy's money. Dusk is falling. Oh, Daddy, I'm tired. When are we going to get there? Now, don't be so impatient, Snooks. The real estate man said he was only five miles from town. What town? <laughs> I wish I knew. Gosh, it got awfully dark fast, didn't it? I don't think so. It took all day. <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it. Say, there's a signpost. I'll stop the car and we'll see where we are. Oh, it's too high up, Daddy. I can't see a thing. Oh, neither can I. Uh, Snooks, one of us will have to climb up there and read it. One of us? Yes. Which one? Oh, what's the difference? I'll give you a boost. <laughs> up you go. Well, what does the sign say? West Point. West Point? Why, that's impossible. Get out of my way. I'd better climb up myself and read it. Oh, Daddy, you better come down off the pole. Why? You were right. It is in West Point. What is it? Wet paint. <laughs> oh. Uh, something, uh, something wrong, folks? Yeah. We're lost. We're looking for number five, Oak Tree Road. Oh, you mean the old haunted house by the cemetery? <laughs> Do you know what, Daddy? What? I think we'd better stay lost. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Uh, listen, mister, can you tell me how to get there? Well, it takes five minutes. To get there? No, to tell you how. <laughs> Make it down the road a piece. <laughs> You don't believe in spooks, do you? Don't I? <laughs> oh, that was just the door. I'll light a candle and show you around. It's really a lovely house. Snooks, hold the candle still. How can I light it when it's shaking so? I ain't holding it. <laughs> you, you aren't? No, you got it in your other hand. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you think I'm afraid. I bet you're right. <laughs> Look at this beautiful room. What a buy I made. Why, these floors are solid oak. What are all those little holes in the floor? They're not holes. They look like holes to me. <laughs> they are holes. But you said they're not holes. That's right. What's right? They're not holes. <laughs> well, Daddy, are there holes or... Ain't they holes? Yes, they are not holes. <laughs> now, do you understand? Yes, I don't. Now, stop picking on this house. There's not a floor in it. Not a floor in it? No. Then what are we standing on? A floor. But you said there was no floor. I did not. I don't like this house. Snokes. Don't be so contrary. This is a wonderful house and a swell investment. I can get a big resale out of it. Why? Because there's no ceiling on this house. Here we go again. Follow me and we'll look at the other rooms. Gosh, it's drafty in here, isn't it? Yeah. Close that window. All right, Daddy. Why, there's still a draft. Did you close that window? I closed it around the edges. <laughs> But it's still open in the middle. <laughs> oh, broken. Well, what's a broken window as long as the rest of the house has a good sturdy... <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Help me out of this hole. <laughs> Gee, this floor is shaky. I can say that again. Gee, this floor is shaky. Up, up. <laughs> Let's go into the dining room. The door is closed. <laughs> And it's stuck. It is not. It just doesn't open that way. It does now. <laughs> How do you like that? Broken doors, broken windows, broken floors. What'll I do when Mummy finds out I've been swindled? Stuck. This is nothing but an old deserted dump. And besides, it's full of old, dirty old spooks. Now, don't be silly. Hey, 
I thought I heard footsteps. You thought? Oh, I must be imagining things. <laughs> oh, dear. You don't be frightened. Here, let me hold your hand. Yeah. Now, are you still afraid? No, Daddy. Are you? Of course not. Then why are you biting my fingernails? Oh, pardon me. Well, if there's somebody in the house, I'm going to find out. Hello. Hello. It's just an echo. Are you sure? Certainly. Listen. Hello. Hello. I'm Lancelot Higgins. So what? <laughs> Are you still sure? Hey, hey, Snooks, Mr. Higgins. Oh, gee, Mr. Dingle, why the echo? Oh, hello, Snooks. Hello. Say, say, Mr. Higgins, I brought a man over. He wants to buy your house. Wants to buy my... Oh, boy, this is my chance. I'll wait outside. Oh, oh, Mr. Taylor, here's the man you want to see. How do you do, Higgins? I'm a man of action. How much do you want for this house? Well, I uh, must consider it's a beautiful house. Wonderful location. Yeah, and right next to the cemetery. <laughs> well, uh, you can't live forever. <laughs> Out here in the country, you, you'll get plenty of sunshine. Because there ain't no ceiling. Uh, that's what I said, uh, plenty of sunshine. And there's no floors, and the windows and the doors are broken. Oh, what a child. Mr. Higgins, I'll give you 2000 cash, dollar for dollar what you pay. Why? Never mind why. I'll take it, Mr. Taylor. All right. Here's the money, and good day, sir. Good day. Hey, did you make a good deal, Mr. Higgins? Wonderful, Jeff. Yeah, he said he was prepared to pay 10000 because the railroad's going to build through here. Railroad? 10000 Oh, I'm sick. Don't worry, Daddy. We wouldn't like the house anyway. We wouldn't? Why not? We'd have to get up in the middle of the night to let the trains through. <laughs> That my hair isn't curly And I know that my features are plain I'm not very strong I have lots of things wrong But I have the perfect brain Don't you believe it <laughs> I'm the smartest man in the world I can speak in any tongue When I dine I know just what the menu means I can order julienne croutons, la benedict souffle. Can I help it if it always turns out beans? I'm the smartest man in the world. I can figure income tax, and it doesn't cause the slightest mental drop. I can add dependence to the gross times, 30 million bucks. It'll come in handy if I find a job. I can figure out a gadget that'll run a plane large enough to hold a troop on. It'll fly four years on a gallon of gas. Can anyone spare a coupon? I'm the smartest man in the world. I'm a super genius plus. There is nothing that my brain cannot control. I'll go down as the most brilliant man the country ever had since Columbus came in 1462. Or was it Roosevelt? I'm a self-reliant mental giant, very zealous, Einstein jealous, the very smartest man in the world. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.